Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the Thursday training call. This is Gina Hawks, product specialist with the Alliance and happy new year to everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I know we've still got uh, several people logging in to the webinar. Um, if you are do happen to be in front of your computer, um, we did send out the link this morning for the webinar if you wanna follow along. Um, if not, if you're just listening in your car, then um, that's okay, not a problem. And this webinar is being recorded, so you'll be able to go out to the NAA YouTube channel later and watch uh, the recording if you wanna see the slides that we're going through. But um, today we're gonna be talking about a uh, relatively new product for the Alliance, which is with Assurity. We've been doing business with Assurity um, for the last several years, and they have a single premium whole life product that we are really excited about. And so we're gonna be talking about that product today and kind of going over the details of it so everybody can get familiar with it. Um, those of you I know, we've got people on the call that um, have been here for a long time, and we have people that are brand new. So if you are brand new and you're kind of wondering where does this product fit in um, with all the different things that we do here at the Alliance. So when we're talking about single premium um, whole life products, this is mainly used in the wealth transfer market. So this is when you're talking to a client and you've, they've, you've found that they've got some money setting somewhere like um, in a CD or in a money market account or a checking account or a savings account or stuffed under the mattress or, or wherever. They've got um, a, a sum of money. And as you'll find out in just a minute, it doesn't have to be a really large sum of money, but they've got some money and the sole purpose of this money is to pass on to heirs. And the best way, um, as you know, to pass money on at death is through life insurance because that goes 100% tax-free to whomever they leave it to. So anytime somebody has some money sitting around and they're wanting to leave that to uh, their family, uh, their grandkids, their kids, a charity, something like that, then these products are a way to be able to maximize the amount of money that someone can pass on. And, um, you know, that's a good thing. The, the, the great part is they already have the money setting somewhere. So we're not necessarily looking for additional money that they have to come up with. They've already got the money, <clears throat> excuse me, tucked aside somewhere and they just want to pass it on when they die. And if, if they're healthy enough to be able to qualify for life insurance, then that's the best way to be able to do that because we can take whatever sum of money they have and we can increase it. And you know, the younger they are, the more we can increase it. The older they are, the less it increases, but regardless, it's going to increase. And if somebody's got money that they wanna pass on, then they're obviously going to be interested in passing on more money if they can, and it doesn't mean any more money out of their pocket. So that's kind of the market. Um, when you're out there and you're meeting with clients and you're talking to people, when you find these people that have some money setting aside, then this is a great um, way to be able to help them with that. And like I said, maximize what they can pass on. So um, that's kind of the market that we're looking at. Uh, I have um, on the line with me and on the screen actually, Doug Bedore. He is from Assurity. And he's gonna be, he's one of our marketing reps with Assurity. He's gonna be going through some of the specifics of the product. And if you're on the webinar, you can use the chat feature. If you have questions as we're going through, just type those in the chat box and we will try to answer as many of those questions as we possibly can. Um, or you can also text, text me questions as well. Um, if you have questions as we're going through. But right now, I'm going to turn this over to Doug. And like I said, he's going to kind of go through the specifics of this product with us. So Doug, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Gina. And thank you, everyone, for uh, joining on the call. I'm uh, honored to probably be your first uh, big uh, meeting here in 2020. So Happy New Year's to everyone. Um, and yeah, we want to jump right in. Gina did a great job uh, kind of giving the, the high level overview of, of where we see the fit on this product. And uh, we'll talk a little bit first about 
some of the features and kind of get into some examples as well. But just as a kind of setting the table here, uh, if you're not familiar, Assurity is a mutual company. We're based out of Lincoln, Nebraska with over 128 years of experience here and uh, we'll be going on uh, 129 here in 2020. So um, we, like I said, based out of Lincoln, Nebraska, I handle the Southeast for Assurity. So I'm based down here in Florida, but uh, if you need help at all, um, the Alliance can always be a great resource for Assurity information or at the end of this presentation, I will have my contact information there as well if you have any follow-up questions as well. So um, we are always here to answer those. But um, as I kind of mentioned before, we'll touch a little bit on the um, specific features of this product, uh, you know, where and when you can sell it. Uh, we'll get into some case studies, some examples of really ideal prospects, um, and then talk a little bit about the marketing and positioning we have for it. So to jump right in here, uh, this is a whole life product that we are funding with a, a single initial premium. And the product is flexible in itself. It's kind of got its spots where we see it used the most, but this can be sold to uh, children all the way up to age 85. So issue ages go down to 15 days up to age 85 and the benefit amounts can go down pretty low. So we're talking about the coverage amounts here uh, can go down to $10,000 for juveniles through the age 50, and then all the way down to $5,000 um, age 55 to 85. So um, again, we're talking about benefit amounts there. It's actually lesser amounts of premium money than that to, uh, to get those started typically. Um, so we can write very low cases, um, and that is advantageous uh, certainly if you have someone that does have a little bit of money stashed away and looking to do something with it there. Um, as you kind of expect, it is an underwritten policy. So we do have standard uh, non-tobacco, standard tobacco, and then juvenile rates. Um, this product is pretty straightforward, kind of uh, simplifying our rate charts. If you're used to um, fully underwritten products, a lot of times you'll see preferreds and preferred pluses. Well, with this, you know, it's kind of a, a, a one-shot deal and we wanna simplify that underwriting process. So just standard, non-tobacco, tobacco, and juvenile rates. Um, but doing that gives us a lot of flexibility. We can non-medically underwrite many of these cases. So if the benefit amount is going to be under $700,000 for a client under age 60, um, it is gonna be non-medical. So no blood, no urine uh, draws there. Um, for the older ages, ages 61 to 85, it goes up to $450,000 of benefit amount. And we're going to look at some examples, as I've mentioned, none of those examples are going to exceed these amounts. So every example we're looking at would be a non-medically um, underwritten um, product. So we do underwrite the product, but and oftentimes it's going to be a pretty easy and quick process. Um, just really need to do the application and we can get everything else um, on our end from our underwriter's perspective. So. Doug, terms, can, can I stop you right there for a second? Sure. Um, I just want to make sure that everybody heard what you just said there, um, because most of what we write at the Alliance is simplified issue, um, which means they don't have to go through blood and urine and all that. So these non-medical limits that Doug's talking about, um, this means that even though it's a fully underwritten product, they're not asking for blood and urine and paramed um, typically for those face amounts. So up to 700,000 up to age 60 and then 450,000 from ages 61 to 85. So that's big because just like you mentioned, Doug, probably most of the cases that we're going to be dealing with are going to fall within those non-medical limits. So to our agents, what that means is your clients most of the time are not going to have to go through blood and a paramed and all that um, to qualify for this product. So, so that's huge. That's a great point. Thanks for uh, accentuating that, Gina. Um, and yes, that is a, a big a part of this. And really, as you'll see in our case designs, um, you'll, you'll typically always fall within these limits. So um, we're, we've generously had set those high for that purpose. We want those to be a, a nice, clean, simplified issue product that, uh, that you could be used to using if you're using simplified issue products there. So just to jump on through, um, some of the advantages here, we can offer our product up to age 85, and that is a, a little bit unique in, in the industry. You don't see uh, those higher levels when we're talking about single premium plans. Um, we will talk a little bit about our single premium insurance rider in a moment, but uh, we do offer it and we'll kind of get into the details there. Um, really the point of the product is a strong death benefit growth. 
Um, the point of it is to you know pass on um, pass on to the heirs uh, through death benefits. So we've kind of skewed the product to really build on that. But that's not to say it doesn't have cash value. These products will show some cash value, and I will show you um, some examples of that as well. So just because a client buys this, this with a single premium, uh, a death benefit isn't going to be the only way they could get cash out of the product. If they needed to, through other means, they could do that as well. And we'll, we'll kind of touch on those in a second as well. So really two riders that you need to be concerned with, and they're really both built-in riders. You're not really having to select or add them on. These would just be in specific examples if uh, the client needed to use them. Um, the first we'll touch on is the accelerated death benefit rider. So the accelerated death benefit rider is um, pretty typical. You'll see, you'll see on most life insurance policies will have a, a terminal illness benefit. And I do want to make the one caveat uh, when I get to this slide, as I always do. Oh, it looks like my PowerPoint just popped off. Let me see if I can pull it back up here. Oh, goodness. We are going to see if I can get this to pull right back up. Looks like it closed out on me. but Bear with me just one moment. And I'm gonna ask Gina, are you able to see my PowerPoint again? Yes, it's up. Okay. Fantastic, I'm not sure what happened there, but let me get to back where we were there. All right, accelerated death benefit rider. As I mentioned, most uh, life insurance policies are gonna carry a, an accelerated death benefit for terminal illness. Ours does have that in addition to a couple other spots you can accelerate. And I do wanna mention, um, these can be state specific. There are a couple states that um, one or two pieces of this may not be available. I would you know, suggest that I think uh, the one I'm thinking of is I think Delaware is a, is a one that the, the accelerated death benefit rider isn't available in. So there's a couple that have some weird stuff, but for the vast majority of states, this is going to be exactly as, as it is presented here. So um, just to run through it, this would advance a portion of the, the death benefit if they become terminally or chronically ill. So the chronic illness is a little bit of a unique feature. Not all carriers will cover that. So if the client becomes chronically ill, and we define that as unable to perform two of six activities of daily living, and those are you know, toileting, transferring, um, bathing, those, those types of things that are going to be the triggers there. So if they can't perform two of six for 90 days, that would trigger the benefit. Um, the other reason that they could uh, trigger this benefit would be uh, required substantial supervision due to severe cognitive impairment. So um, cognitive impairment can be another trigger. So if they do trigger this benefit, they can accelerate their death benefit out of the policy early. So um, the amount they can accelerate is going to depend on a couple factors. Really, the biggest thing for chronic illness that we look at is the maximum they can pull out of the policy um, each year is gonna be defined by whatever the HIPAA per diem limits are. And the IRS uh, establishes those year to year. For example, uh, in 2020, they've established that it's uh, $380 per day. Um, if you multiply that by 365, it's about $130,000 is, is that number. So if they become chronically ill, they can pull out up to 135, excuse me, about $130,000 from their death benefit early out of the policy. Um, the other caveat there is they need to at least keep $10,000 of death benefit in the policy. So this, this feature will kind of depend on what, they're, what they've got set up in death benefit. If they've got a $100,000 policy, they could eventually get $90,000 out of the policy because they need to keep that 10 in there. Um, if they have a, a much smaller policy, if they only have about $15,000 of death benefit, really it's only $5,000 that they're going to have available to them because of that minimum requirement to keep $10,000 of death benefit. So just want to kind of give you a, a, a big wide overview of this is built in the policy. It is available to the client to use if they, if they come across that situation. Um, and death is not the only reason that someone could gain money out of the policy. In terms of needing help while they're still alive, this policy can fit the bill as well. So, in addition to chronic illness, what you typically see in life insurance policies is terminal illness as well, and we do have that built in on this plan as well. So uh, terminal illness, uh, condition that would be generally 12 months or less to live, diagnosed uh, from a physician, certified by a physician, 12 months or less to live, they can accelerate their death benefit early. Again, the maximum they can accelerate on the terminal side would be $500,000 of death benefit. So they'd have to have a pretty large policy to, to do that. 
And again, this one does have a minimum as well, $10,000. So similar scenario, if they have you know, $100,000 of death benefit, they could take out $90,000 if they become terminally ill to keep that remainder 10,000 in there. So again, this is the accelerated death benefit rider built in on the product. There's no additional cost. If uh, it's available in the state, it's gonna go ahead and be uh, added onto the product there. Well, oh, I had a slide on chronic illness just to kind of show you a little bit more. We'll dive into a second amount of detail here. Uh, the chronic illness, the one other caveat to this is it is issued on uh, ages up to age 75. So if you have someone in the 75 to 85 bracket, because we still do sell the policy up to age 85, uh, chronic illness would not be built in, but anyone under age 75, it is going to be built in on there. Um, and we are not doing any additional underwriting on, on this particular piece of it. We're using mortality to offer this benefit. We're accelerating their death benefit. Um, this is not an additional um, long-term care or anything uh, separate or critical illness where we're looking at the morbidity of a client. So that's just to kind of put your mind at ease. There's nothing additional that we're doing underwriting wise. We're going to using the same things that we would for a, a, a simplified issue whole life plan or a single premium whole life plan like this. Um, just morbidity underwriting. Um, and a, a couple uh, spots on this, uh, premiums would reduce after acceleration. So if they did use this acceleration and they decided that they had a $100,000 policy and they're gonna take out $50,000 because they're terminally ill, uh, the policy adjusts for that. They're not going to continue to pay the, the uh, full premium. And with the single premium, that's uh, actually uh, kind of a null point. So I think that's probably left over from our regular whole life. But I will jump over to the other rider that's on the plan. And, and this is, again, a rider that is really just exists if the client wants to use it. There's no additional cost here. And what this rider is, is a single premium insurance rider. So the base plan, you're funding this particular plan with a single premium. You can also elect in the first year of the plan to add additional premium into the plan. So um, within the first year, if you would like to, if the client would like to, they can add an additional premium. That additional premium would come in under this rider. And what that additional premium would do is just buy up death benefit. Now, one thing I wanna point out about this whole life plan, it is a participating whole life plan. For the base policy, you're paying premium, that premium's going in, buying a portion of death benefit but also the money that's in the plan is, is going to be earning uh, gains on the dividend basis because it is participating, it does participate in receiving dividends. Um, if you are doing everything to your base policy, you're gonna, and we're gonna see some examples of this, you're gonna see the policy grow and the cash value grow, and you're gonna see what the uh, coverage amount is in year one, and if they have dividends growing in the policy, generally you can use those to buy up more cash value. So that's kind of how a standard policy would work. So for younger clients, it may be advantageous for them to use the rider. And the rider is basically making a purchase of additional death benefit that is outside the participating dividend um, portion of the whole life. So we're going to see an example of this, but for younger clients, if you're using maybe a, a blend, you do half on base and half on the single premium insurance rider, you're oftentimes going to see um, higher death benefit amounts towards the end. And I'll kind of show you an example there. But really, this is only kind of used in certain um, scenarios for younger clients. This product generally is used to older clients and, and uh, used mainly for um, the older ages. So you're probably not gonna see this rider pop up too much, but I'll show you an example where it does. Doug, we had one question about that. You mentioned sure. the minimum. Is there a maximum on the additional premium that can be added? So the uh, the maximum, uh, there's not a stated maximum. I, I'm trying to see if we still have it. I, there is a percentage. It can't be more than the, the base coverage. So if you're doing $100,000 of base, you couldn't do $200,000 of your single premium insurance rider. So unless we've made any adjustments to that, it should be worked that way kind of uniformly actually across there. So um, as long as you're not exceeding what you're doing in terms of base coverage, uh, you can be fine doing um, single premium. The minimum, as it says on the screen there, is $500. Okay, thank you. Yep, great question. All right, going to get into a couple kind of examples, and Gina did a great job kind of uh, giving an overarching uh, idea of kind of where we see these fit. 
Um, but I do want to give you a, a kind of where we see the most classic example of this product fitting, and that is the wealth transfer market. Um, and then some secondary spots as well, um, kind of that pre-retirement age. And we'll also look at the juvenile case as well. But uh, to start with, with wealth transfer, why? I mean, it immediately increases the client's estate value because you're taking a $1 amount and turning it into a, a higher death benefit amount. So their estate value at their time of, of passing would be higher just immediately day one once they buy the product. Um, they still do have accessibility to cash value um, with withdrawals and loans on these products that there is that option there generally these aren't sold to focus on that these are sold to, to transfer wealth but we want clients to know that they do have the peace of mind if first something changes in the future they do have some ability to access that um, and of course just like most life insurance policies it is <clears throat> a tax-free death benefit as well so that is kind of the great story about why life insurance is such a fantastic use for wealth transfer we talked a little bit about accelerated death benefit rider, but that is just to kind of underline there that um, this product does have some protections in there if the client were to get sick um, and be able to take out that money early and still use it for their errors or use it for whatever they need at that time. So in this case, say we're looking at, again, wealth transfer, we're gonna use a 72-year-old 70, female. And for this example, we're gonna say that they have $30,000 um, currently in CDs. And this could be money in CDs, this could be money really anywhere, it could be under the mattress. Uh, why we're seeing such a resurgence of this product uh, over the last few years is because we've seen interest rates so stagnant over the last decade, really. Um, I don't think most uh, carriers and clients uh, expected the interest rate environment to extend so flat for so long. Um, and that is a real big reason why people still are saying, okay, I've had this money sitting in a CD, is there a better use for it? So it, it is really a ripe market currently. And as interest rates continue to kind of be flat, um, it will continue to be a market that uh, we, we see exposed um, and grow. So this particular client is looking uh, to pass on money to their grandkids to help with college expenses. And uh, that really could be any reason, whether it be looking to pass money to grandkids or kids or anyone for any reason. Um, it is a great wealth transfer tool. So I'm gonna show you a quick example of what we did. And I know this might be small on the screen, but I'll, I'll kind of run through it real quick here. Um, the client did use that $30,000 and purchased uh, a full um, base product for $30,000 of, of uh, premium. And day one, it buys a death benefit of, of $40,658. So they immediately have increased their $30,000 to a $40,000 death benefit. On the left-hand side is our guaranteed column. This just assumes that uh, that money goes in and the death benefit is the death benefit and continues on. And this policy is guaranteed out to age 121. So there are further pages down below. But on the right-hand side, I do wanna show you, uh, because this is a participating policy and because that $30,000 is going in and er earning a dividend, um, it will grow. Uh, if they wanted to walk away from the policy, for example, let's say in year five, uh, they're back up to about $27,000. Their break-even point's about year seven, where they're back at $30,000. So for whatever reason, plans change, things change, they want to walk away, they can still walk away with a surrender value. But really the, the great part about being a whole life and a participating whole life is we can use those dividends to let that cash value um, build the policy and grow the death benefit. So as you'll see, year five, we're up to $43,000 of death benefit. Year 10, we're up to 46,000. I'm gonna jump all the way down to year 20. So at year 20, um, still holding this policy, at the current dividend rate, we're at $52,000 of death benefit. So they've gone from just sitting on that $30,000 and with CDs these days, not earning probably a whole lot to having a guaranteed death benefit, uh, knowing that they're gonna have death benefit there and with the potential of having that death benefit grow. So kind of a straightforward looking uh, at this product where we see it. Now, as we saw before, a, a 72 year old, that $30,000 amount could be much less. Um, the, the really the, the caveat of that what we need is we need that death benefit to be at least $5,000 to start with. So if they have $2,500, there's a potential there that that's enough to get them to the minimum of $5,000 of death benefit. So, um, and as we mentioned before, they've got a lot of room in terms of the upper end. If they have a lot of money uh, looking to 
transfer that on through a life insurance product. Again, we're up to $450,000 they can do without, uh, you know, invasive underwriting there. Um, and certainly you might find some clients that have large amounts of money that are, are looking to do this strategy. We can certainly do those as well, which just um, require a little bit more underwriting on our end. So that's going to be the, the typical what we see uh, this product used and what we have seen this product used for. Um, but there are a couple other spots that uh, it, it makes sense in. Um, again, the pre-retirement market, we're going to look at uh, client the their mid-50s here and where this might fit for them. Um, and the reasons are, are much of the same, tax-free death benefit, uh, tax-deferred growth, um, and the accelerated benefit rider with some growth potential there with the dividends. So we're gonna take a look at this client. Uh, we actually start him off at uh, age 45, so 45-year-old male, um, and he has a, a pretty um, sizable portfolio as it is. He has $500,000 in his portfolio. He's building towards retirement. Um, but he is getting to the point where he wants to start being a little more conservative and he's looking to take a hundred thousand of that and allocate that to what he would think of as a, a secure base and what we often call a secure base. We think life insurance is one of the most secure bases that you can build into a financial plan. So we're going to say, okay, we have a hundred thousand dollars of his portfolio that we're going to use to build that base. Um, he's going to keep the rest doing what he's doing. Um, presumably as he gets older, he's probably going to get a little more conservative with that money. Um, what could he have done with that hundred thousand dollars? Well, he could put it into a comparable secure fund, um, hopefully earn, you know, 3% interest compounded annually. Uh, in this day and age, that's probably a, a pretty hopeful thinking, but let's assume that he does. So after 20 years, if he were to do that, he'd have a gain of about $80,000 for a total of $180,000 in his, uh, in his savings there. But what if we took that $100,000 and allocated it there to um, a single premium life insurance policy? So what we're going to do on this particular client, we're using $100,000. We're going to do $50,000 to his base. We're going to do $50,000 using that single premium insurance rider. And that's just going to kind of immediately give us a bought up paid for death benefit that's a, a little higher there. Um, because he's a little bit younger, uh, these tend to work out a little bit better and show some um, higher uh, growth. So what we'll see, and I'll have an illustration come up next, but the non-guaranteed cash value uh, at age 65, so 20 years in, is going to be $197,000. So we're a little bit higher there than uh, if you were to just go and, and walk around and invest that somewhere else and get uh, 3%. Um, that would be a, an equivalent return of 4.82% uh, on this product. Uh, the non-guaranteed death benefit of the plan at age 65 is going to be up to 409000 so we see that we've greatly increased the amount that he would transfer to his heirs if he were to pass away in his uh, build up to retirement there. Um, and that is certainly a very strong return. If you look at the numbers there, it would be about a 10% return. So I'm gonna show an example of this again. And again, I'm sorry if it's small on the screen, but I'll run through it real quick here. Uh, we dropped in $100,000. Cash value is always gonna be a little bit lower when you're starting out. Uh, again, the break even point on this product is about seven years. So if you were to walk away seven years from now, he could get his $100,000 back and that's on the guaranteed side. Um, but we did allocate some to our rider, which actually bolsters the, the surrender value a little bit. So if we're looking on the non-guaranteed side and assuming the dividends in there, uh, seven years in the plane, he's got about a $10,000 gain, $11,000 gain. But we are looking at this as kind of a long-term plan. So if we're looking 20 years out where he was you know, just hoping to just park his money and let it sit, well, if he uses this plan on the non-guaranteed side, he's got $197,000 of, of surrender value in there. And he's built up his death benefit to just over $400,000. Um, so again, this is a great way to show he's, he's basically four times what he's put into this plan 20 years later. He's got a, a very large death benefit that can be utilized. Um, one, if he passes away to transfer to his heirs, but he still has value in this product if he wishes to walk away with it. So a couple spots there. And also want to just uh, show you, we did start off with a death benefit of $323,000, uh, well below the um, the minimums we need to go ahead and just get that simplified underwriting as well. And this is just to kind of accentuate the numbers that we had mentioned before. If uh, if we're looking at that, it's about a 4.82% uh, pre-tax equivalent to what his surrender value would be on the non-guaranteed side. 
uh, if he were to pass away, we were to transfer that out, um, it's about a 10% return. So um, in this current interest rate environment, those are pretty strong numbers to be able to show a client, know that they're buying something that's gonna give them a guaranteed death benefit and still have the potential to have some pretty great returns. Lastly, we're just gonna touch on the juvenile market and where we see this mostly used um, would be parents or more often than not, grandparents um, looking to leave money to their grandchildren. And in this, in this scenario, they're leaving m money in the form of life insurance policy. So this would be writing a plan on the juvenile um, as a wealth transfer tool um, to give that juvenile a, a plan for them to use going into uh, adulthood. So for this particular example, we're kind of going to use lower amounts here. We've got a five-year-old um, and we've got a granddaughter, so we're assuming a grandparent is purchasing on it. Um, we're doing a $5,000 premium, and similarly with young clients, uh, we generally will split between base and the single premium rider, and that generally is going to show a little bit more building to it in terms of uh, cash value. And we'll see uh, day one uh, on this plan, it's going to be $65,000 of death benefit. That is obviously on the juvenile. Um, but I think really what's more important is we're going to look at um, really years to come for this juvenile and what this plan will mean for them um, in their life and, and what's being gifted to them. So I'm um, going to bring up the chart, and this one's probably even smaller, but we'll go ahead and run through it. Uh, a $5,000 uh, premium amount is buying that $64,000 of death benefit day one, and that $64,000 will continue for that um, child's lifetime. But as you can see, that death benefit does grow over time with the dividends building uh, building the value. And what I like to look at is, okay, this client, this this juvenile is five years old now. Uh, what happens when they you know get through college and you're starting their career? So at the you know age 22, 23, 24, where are they at? Well, one, they've got about nine thousand dollars of surrender value. If they needed to pay for a wedding or a down payment on a house, they could get money out of this plan. But I think what's more importantly, and, and me being in the life insurance business, is they've got a large por portion of their life insurance taken care of. Um, at that point, if we look at uh, age 25, they've got $78,000 of death benefit in this plan. Um, this is a client that's going to be ahead of the game compared to their peers who are you know, searching around then and there, hoping to find some term life insurance to get them going as they start their careers. Well, this client um, has a lot of that need. Uh, put away and, and built into a permanent plan. So really, I think the story for this, for a grandparent is, is yes, you're gifting them, you're, you're transferring your wealth, but you're transferring the form of a life insurance policy that is paid up for. Um, so, and because we're uh, working with such a young client at age five, you can typically buy a lot of coverage with relatively a little amount of money. So $5,000 is gonna get you 65 right then and there. Um, so just another way we've seen this product use, um, really the, the full story is kind of what Gina had mentioned at the beginning of our call. This is a way to transfer wealth, whether it be through death benefit, um, whether it be you're in a pre-retirement situation and you're looking to kind of diversify your assets. Well, some of those assets can go to a death benefit or actually, you know, looking to transfer a life insurance policy to a juvenile to make sure that um, one, if anything were to happen to them, obviously uh, the family is, is in a position to take care of that, but mostly so they're getting set up for life the right way when they're, you know, looking to establish themselves as young adults, they're, they're one step ahead in terms of having coverage there. So we've kind of talked about a few different scenarios that we like to see and, and have seen the plan use. Uh, we have a lot of materials that are available. If you um, become appointed with a surety, you will have access to a surety's website. And, and I believe we can probably share a lot of this information with the Alliance as well, if they have uh, some way that they like to serve it up to you as well. Um, but we have lots of uh, materials that one, speak to the product in general, but two, speak to um, the types of clients that we talked about today. I think each of the ones that we talked about today has its own one page piece that kind of gives a, a general explanation there as well. Um, so those are available uh, directly from us. Uh, we have lots of different pieces that um, talk about wealth transfer in the current environment. 
um, especially when you look at annuities and CDs and what they're offering, that life insurance can oftentimes be a very great solution there. So with that, I do just want to mention one side thing that's a little off topic, but we do see this uh, kind of overlap sometimes. The surety does have um, a, a non-single premium plan, whole life plan. Um, we do sell uh, just a kind of a standard permanent whole life plan, um, but we did have a new update to that plan, and that plan added uh, the ability to do a 10 pay, a 20 pay, or an age 65. So what you may be used to on whole life plans are you're paying for all years, you're buying it, and you expect that client to be paying all years. If you have a client that maybe has some money set aside, but they're not ready to just do a full on single premium, we do have some options on our other plan, this uh, new participating whole life plan, that they could set up maybe a 10 pay or a 20 pay. So they could spread that payment out over a little bit longer time. So just wanted to mention it because it's kind of in the same wheelhouse. Sometimes we have some agents that go in um, kind of thinking single premium, but all that money up front may not be exactly what they're looking for. Um, kind of pivoting to an option to give them a little bit of a wider premium ramp there with our new participating on life plan. Again, being able to pay it at a 10, a 20, or a, a, just specifically the age 65 um, can be helpful to diversify and might be able to um, pivot if the single premium is not working there. That particular product is going to mirror a lot of the same features that we've talked about in the single premium in terms of accelerated be death benefit. Um, and in addition to cash value growth, kind of similar like what you've seen there. So just wanted to mention it wasn't going to be the focus today, but um, oftentimes we see that sometimes being a pivot product if necessary for certain clients. So with that, I'm going to pop my pretty face on the screen. So again, my name was Doug Bedore. Uh, I handle the Southeast Territory. I'm the regional sales manager and um, our phone number and extensions are up there on the screen. If you have any specific questions, we'd love to have them. My colleague within our home office over in Lincoln, Nebraska is Christy McGorian. Um, she is fantastic and can also help you out if you need any sort of marketing material, any sort of quotes or answer any deep product questions. She knows it all so she can help you out as well and her name and number there as well. And that was most of my prepared remarks. I'm going to pop back to Gina and see if we had anything come up during that time. Hi. Yes. Thank you, Doug. Um, yeah, we do have a few questions. Um, someone asked about a diabetic, if someone uh, that is diabetic at age 23 can be covered. And um, they have underwriting guidelines. If you go to the NAA Leads website on the Assurity Carrier page, there's uh, a link for their underwriting guidelines, um, financial underwriting guidelines, impairments, all of that is on our website. So like everything, it varies, um, especially with diabetes, there's a lot of things that go into, come into play. And there are certain in their, um, either in their underwriting guide or their impairment guide, I don't remember which one. The, it does list several conditions, and if the client has any of those conditions, then it tells you the additional information that they're going to need about that condition, and diabetes is one of them that's listed. So um, go to their underwriting guide and look at that and look at all the information that they need um, regarding diabetes, and then, of course, the answers to all those questions is going to determine whether or not, you know, someone will qualify. Um, usually juvenile diabetics, you know, depending on when they were diagnosed, that's usually a hard um, thing to cover. But again, it depends on a lot of different factors. So check out their underwriting guidelines, because remember, this is a fully underwritten product. This is not a simplified issue where they have very, um, you know, they have a list that says this is going to be accepted and this is not. It's fully underwritten. So um, there, it's not as cut and dry as what you're going to see with our simplified issue companies. Um, and Doug, anything you want to add to that? No, that's a great point, Gina. It, it, and to kind of reiterate, yes, it is a fully underwritten product, um, but being fully underwritten, it does give us some leeway. And uh, meaning that, yes, we can offer these plans um, for a lot of conditions. And what we can do um, is table rate the plan. So if we have a, and I'm not saying diabetes would specifically be table written, it, it may be certainly um, in some scenarios, 
But if we have some adverse health conditions that are coming through, um, there's a potential that we could still offer a plan. They just may add a, a table four. I mean, I believe we can technically uh, do up to a table eight on these plans. Now, with this type of plan, because it's really all based around what premium we're paying, when we table rate or we give a, a, a substandard rating, really that while that's changing is how much death benefit they're buying. I mean, obviously, the, if the client's applying for this and planning to put $5,000 in, uh, if they get rated, their plan probably is still going to be $5,000. It's just how much coverage that's going to buy. So um, I would say that, uh, you know, we, because we're fully underwritten, it actually gives us some leeway. We can still write those subcenter classes. It just may be uh, really a decision there is, okay, is making this purchase to buy X amount of death benefit fit my needs? Is it enough to, to make sense? Um, but it's, it, it doesn't, we don't have to go back very often and say, okay, this person's table raise, you're going to have to give us X amount of money to get to the death benefit you wanted. That's not normally how most of these sales are approached anyway. So um, it is pretty straightforward. Okay, you're being rated, this would buy X amount of death benefit. And it's a pretty straightforward way to explain it to the client. Um, typically, it's going to be a yes or no decision from there. Um, is there a contact for underwriting? Like if somebody has a client and they're not really sure if they should submit the application because of health conditions, is there a particular um, telephone extension or email that they should um, get to to talk to an underwriter? If you use the same general 800 number that's on the screen, um, there's going to be a, an option for um, uh, new business and underwriting. Um, I believe is what the prompt says. Um, so that will get us, get you over to our new business team. The vast majority of underwriting questions can be answered directly by that team. Um, if it is getting into the weeds underwriting wise, they will absolutely bring an underwriter on the line and they have no qualms about doing that if necessary. Um, they'll get you directly into one or have one come on the line and um, get into the specifics there. So um, if you use the general 800 number, they do have a separate extension, but I think there's just a prompt you can follow with that 800 numbers. Uh, I don't remember the extension off the top of my head, but that will absolutely get you there. And just as a, a side note, if you have the information in email form, it's as simple as uh, underwriting at assurity.com. If you shoot an email there, um, they'll take a look at it. Um, and usually that's you know for general questions, they can do those right over the email as well. Okay, great. Um, Anti-money laundering. Um, do you guys have your own? Do you accept Limra? We accept Limra. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, we don't have our own, but we do uh, generally accept Limra. Okay. Um, as someone asked, when the child becomes an adult, can they transfer it to a whole life policy? This is a whole life policy. So like if a grandparent buys it for a grandchild, they don't have to transfer anything. It's a permanent policy. This isn't term, it's not a term rider or anything like that. So, you know, when the child becomes an adult, there's nothing that they have to do. It's, all, it's paid up, it's taken care of. Um, question about quoting it. I know you have the illustration software that's available on the Assurity website. Do you have any type of mobile quoting tools that somebody can use on a phone or are they going to need to use this software on the website? Right now it would be the software on the website. Uh, within, I would say probably the first quarter, you will probably see some stuff from us um, giving you some more options on the mobile side of things. We, we have other products that we've built out um, more accessible mobile um, based quotings. Um, our single premium isn't one of them yet, but I expect that to be um, coming soon. But as of right now, yes, uh, the Assurity agent producer uh, website is going to be the best spot for you. Okay. And then for a brand new agent that is not contracted with Assurity, mm -hmm. um, so they're not going to be able to get on the website to do a quote. Um, they're not going to be able to get an application because as I understand, you appoint or Shorty appoints an agent when they submit their first application. Is that correct? 
So the way we do it is if you send in uh, contracting paperwork without an application, uh, we will take that information. We will set up an agent code for, for that producer. So they will have an agent code, but they're not technically active until that first piece of, piece of business comes in. So, um, so the short of that is, is if you don't have a piece of business, but you do want to get set up in a surety system, go ahead and send in contracting paperwork. We'll get you an agent code that will give you access to a surety's website to do quotes, to get marketing material, all that good stuff. Um, so, but if you don't want to go down that route and still have a quote you want to do or want to get an application, your best bet would be contacting our sales team with the, the information on the screen. Um, generally, you'll be able to get to Christy probably faster than you, you would me because I'm out on the road quite a bit. Um, but yeah, if you reach out to our sales team, um, give Christy's extension a call. She can run any quote for you, shoot you out any application if you're kind of in that scenario where you're not appointed yet. Okay, okay, great. So um, that that's good, that they can at least submit their contract and then you'll set them up with a ID so that they can um, at least get in and do quotes and things like that. And yeah, they'll be yeah, kind of it's a temporary little ID they can get in and do it. And then once that piece of business comes in, they're, they're fully active in our system, so. Okay. All right. So anybody that is um, interested in selling these, you come across some clients, then put your contracting in naacontracting.com so that you can get the login. Um, in the meantime, if you need something, contact the sales team. They can help you with that or your manager can help you with that as well. Okay. Um, so we, I've gotten several questions about how you get paid on these. So these are single premiums uh, for the most part, but like Doug said, you can add additional money into it um, in the first year. But there is a commission grid out on the Assurity uh, Carrier page on the NAA Leads website. There is an ARC commission um, grid out there. So you can look at that and that'll show you um, how you will get paid. And just to give you an idea, um, the 100% payout grid in the first year, it's 5.52% uh, of whatever the single premium amount is. That's at the 100%. So then again, you would adjust based on your contract level. Um, I can tell you that it is, um, the highest paying single premium product that we have right now. So <laughs> we don't have a lot of, we actually only have one other single premium product. Um, this one does pay more. So I know you guys will be glad to hear that. Um, so that's how you get paid. Uh, production credit for trips and things like that, um, I believe is 10% uh, of the single premium since it's a single premium product. Um, I have had several questions about copies of the presentation. We have a training presentation out on the NAA Leads website on the carrier page, as well as there is a university course on this product and there's a presentation out there as well. So, um, so there's several different places that you can see this information again. And like I said, this uh, webinar is being recorded. So you will be able to go back and watch the recording on the YouTube, the Alliance YouTube channel. Um, again, just to reiterate, there is uh, Assurity has an e-app for this product. We are not able to use it because we're not getting the data feeds. Um, we will work on that, but as of right now, it is paper app only. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, what is the website? It's just Assurity.com. Uh, um, so I think, all right, that's part of the questions. Okay. Um, state approvals, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Doug, I believe this product is approved in all states except for New York. That is correct. Okay. Um, would I assume it's simplified issue for children? No, it's not simplified issue for anyone. <laughs> it's a fully underwritten product, so you have to fill out the application and answer all the health questions. And again, depending on their health, will determine uh, what they qualify for. Um, it's, it's, again, it's fully underwritten non-medical, meaning for children, as long as they fall under those benefits amounts we talked about earlier, 700,000, um, they're not gonna ask for blood and all that, but it's not simplified issue. It is fully underwritten and they do need to fill out all the questions and answer all the questions on the application. Um, 
have had a couple questions about taking money out um, of the product. Uh, Doug mentioned that. Um, I do want to keep in mind that these are modified endowment contracts because of the single premium that goes into them. It causes a MEC or a modified endowment contract. What that means, it does not affect the death benefit at all. So again, a lot of times we're using this for wealth transfer. Um, so it doesn't affect the death benefit. The death benefit will still be 100% tax free, um, even with it being a MEC. However, if they do take cash out of the policy, it is taxable. Um, it's taxed, the gains are what is taxable, but it's tax gains first. So, um, so yes, if they're taking cash value out, there are tax consequences for that because it is a modified endowment contract. So, um, and, and again, somebody's asking about using it to create income um, versus death benefit. It can, just like that Doug showed you, it does build cash and they can use that cash, but you just gotta keep in mind that there are tax implications for using the cash. Again, not typically what we're using it for, it's typically more death benefit, um, but because of that MEC situation, um, but the money is there. They, I, the way I look at the cash value in these policies, because they are a MEC, is it's for emergencies. Um, not necessarily something that somebody is going to want to use in the future um, or, or, you know, planning on using. It's more emergency if they need to the fund, need access to the funds because there are those tax consequences. Um, it does have cash value. It is whole life. So you can borrow the money. You can withdraw the money. You can pay it back. But anytime you take money out, you're going to have those tax consequences, even if you do pay it back. So... Just, just keep that in mind. Um, are the apps state specific? I imagine there are at least a few that are state specific. Do you know? They, they are state specific. Um, I don't know how many, but if you are pulling applications, for example, through our website, um, you'll select the state and it's going to serve you up the right app. I'm pretty sure for this product, most of them, almost all, I don't think we have you know, a general one that covers a bunch of states. I think pretty much all of them are going to be specific to the state. So, yep, it will be important to match up the right state. Okay, yeah. And same thing on the software. Um, I know usually the illustrations are state specific. So, you've got to make sure when you're in the illustration software that you choose the right state as well. Okay, let me just scan. I'm going to scan my other uh, text and see if I have anything else. Doug, if there's anything that you want to add um, while I'm looking at these the, to the questions we just covered. Sure. No, I, and I appreciate yeah, the, the mention of the modified endowment contract. I think Gina is spot on. When we think of these products, that's why we really do focus them on wealth transfer. Um, that's not to say that there isn't ways to access money in these plans. Um, I think thinking of those as kind of the emergency situation is the best route. If you have a client with a lump sum that is specifically looking to grow it, I'm certain that there are annuity options that are probably going to be more specific fits for them, um, just in the way that those are designed and the options that they would then have. So um, I generally don't see these being sold or led uh, with growth sales. So I would think of these more as wealth transfers. Okay, I think that covers um, all the questions that I got and everything that we have. Um, someone's asking, is there interest taken out when someone takes money out? So when they take money out because of that MEC status, um, a portion is interest and a portion is a return of their premiums. So yes, when they take money out, part of that is considered interest um, as they're taking it out. Correct. And specific to a, a MEC, a modified endowment contract, and you mentioned it, Gina, whenever you take money out of a modified endowment contract, the assumption is you're taking out your gains first. So your gains come out first and therefore are going to be taxed um, before you can get to your, your original premium. So um, yes, they'll, they'll specifically be taxed on that. 
Okay, I think that is it. Um, so Doug, I definitely want to thank you for taking some time out. I know Christy was uh, going to be on the call and um, was unfortunately had something come up and able, unable to be in the office. So Doug, I definitely appreciate you coming on last minute and helping us out. And um, I believe, and, and Doug, you may or may not know this, but I believe Christy is going to be at our national convention coming up here in a few weeks, um, latter part of January. Do you know for sure? I, I don't know for sure, but it sounds like that may be the case, but I'll, I'll check in with her and hopefully uh, we'll get out there. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking that she had told me she would be there. Um, but everybody, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you have additional questions, you know, feel free to contact me or the sales team at Assurity. We'll be glad to uh, get answers to any other questions that you come across. But um, I just want to uh, remind you that there is a course on this product out on the university, on the NAUniversity.com website. So you can go out there and go through that to, um, to recap. And um, also anyone that has not got their tickets yet to national convention, we've got that going on in um, starting on the 23rd of January. So we definitely want you to, or I believe the 24th, um, it would definitely want you to get to NatCon. So if you have not gotten your NatCon tickets yet, then um, please talk to your agency manager. They can get the tickets for you um, because we do not want you to miss NatCon. It's going to be an amazing event. Lots of good training going on. Uh, lots of good association. Getting to meet the carrier reps from our different insurance companies. All of that is um, a key of reasons why to get to NatCon and um, you do not want to miss it. So if you have not gotten your tickets yet, then definitely talk to your agency manager and uh, get your NatCon tickets. But thanks everybody for tuning in. And um, we'll talk to you later on another call or at a hotspot. Um, have a great rest of your day. Thanks a lot.